What's up Thrashers and welcome back once again to the Thrash Maniac 99 YouTube channel and yeah still dealing with the head cold but it's not as bad as it was yesterday but it's still kind of bad. But anyways I'm here to persevere and deliver yet another album review for you guys and today I'm talking about the latest offering from, oh god I have to pronounce this, Unas Preklechen Colton. I probably butchered that, with their new album, Haxen Saboth, or Sabauth. I don't know how to speak German or Spanish, but anyway, so this is a Chilean death metal band, and yet, being from Chile, yet they have a German name, kind of uh, interesting, but yeah, Chilean death metal band that's all obsessed with Lovecraft and Cthulhu and all that crazy dark shit that we all love in our death metal. So, yeah, I got curious to check this one out because I've seen this band come up a couple of times whenever I was going on to Metal Archives. And the main bands I see this band get compared to are Immolation and Incantation. So I thought... Well, since I got a new album, how about I check it out and see what it's all about. So we kick things off with Lamia Succuba. I think that's right. And this is where you kind of get into a bit of a formula with this album. Pretty much like most of the songs on this album have a different kind of intro. And pretty much like I would say... As I'm looking on my notes on my other screen here, it looks like, yeah, pretty much every song had some kind of intro. But like this, like the first three tracks and the final track has some like dark chants and spoken word, but also even some organs, which gives it like a funeral dirge vibe, which I can appreciate, but maybe not on every song. But they do vary it up later on as we get a get along in the album they do change the intros up so yeah you get this like intro build into where we go and pretty much the three big things you're going to get used to hearing on this album are apocalyptic tremolo riffs a la incantation triplet chugging a la bands like morbid angel and deicide and dissonance very much in the vein of bands like immolation and dare i even say ulcerate to some extent granted not as technical as ulcerate but you kind of get that vibe here and there and this opening track strange riff combinations that lead into just a flat out apocalyptic atmosphere that feels very much like incantation and then another thing that kind of pops up on about 50 percent of this album some nice double time grooves going on to kind of like give a driving rhythm to a lot of these songs to like amp up the aggression now another thing that comes up a lot on this album are the leads now there are some great leads on this album that kind of vary from like that kind of slayer dive bomb where it's just sometimes the leads can feel very melodic at times atmospheric or even just shred for the hell of it However, I will complain, though, that on a few of these songs, in particular, I would say uh, Hexen Nipple, which um, my nipples were quite erect during that song. Not really. But yeah, it's like that song, like the second half of the album, it really seems as though they were really relying a lot on a bunch of lead sections. Where I like having at the very most like two lead sections, but some of these songs even have like three to four lead sections. It's like I feel like they may kind of overdo the leads a little bit because it's just like after every measure almost, especially on the songs in the back half where it's like, oh, let's put in a solo here or a big crazy dive bomb lead. And it's like maybe chill out and let's just riff out a little bit more perhaps. But. Then we get into Catro Velas de Seppo Infantil. Some of these song titles I know I'm not going to get correct, but again, Dark Chance, spoken word. But then it gets a little bit thrashy, kind of like early immolation, I would say. And then you get these like solid grooves with the dissonant riffs that kind of harken back to, say, 
the here and after to failure for failures for gods era immolation like that late 90s run from immolation where you get like a nice balance between groove and dissonance but then you get like maybe 10 percent of some doom on this album like you get these like nice little death doom grooves and breakdowns that come up now the next track are almighty phonic lords one of the few titles i could say correctly Again, organs, spoken word, it's kind of a rinse and repeat thing with that. But then you get into a nice triplet chug with dissonance. And then I do love hearing that combination when done right. And even some eerie acoustic guitars and violin comes in towards the end of the song to kind of add on to the darkness of this album. Uh, Do Henna Formula? I don't know. This intro is a little more unique because you get these more evil vocals before it leads into some nice doom and dissonance. And then you get more of those apocalyptic tremolos, solid grooves. And at times when the vocals, not only on this track, but on the whole album, whenever the vocalist goes from his like low gutturals to like a higher register... Sounds a bit like Martin Van Drunen. I know this is the second review in a row I brought him up, but it's just kind of weird how both of these albums I've talked about thus far have moments where the vocals kind of get into Martin Van Drunen territory. Um, then we get to back to the Mother Hydra and Father Dagon, where you get more horror movie synths, which was pretty cool to hear. And then you get more dissonance into more doom and wild apocalyptic tremolos, triplet chugging with more blackened tremolos to kind of bring in a little bit of a black metal feel. And then the final track, which is nearly eight and a half minutes, uh, Die Tufelbulker. I probably butchered that, but I love how it starts off with this, like, Again, dark acoustic, but bass line that's kind of just adding on the atmosphere and it builds up nicely into a section where it gets into like almost Iron Maiden gallops, but it's darker and more evil and with dissonant riffs. It gets doomy again, more double time, blast beats, triplet chugs, even some cool tapping leads. Like one thing I will give credit when it comes to these leads, whenever you hear these tapping sections, it really makes you think, Wow, these guitarists really know how to play their instruments so damn well. And a cool breakdown that kind of descends in terms of the dynamic. And even a dark melody that fades out towards the end, which was really nice to hear. So as far as complaints, I do have issues with the production on this album, mostly in the mix. Like the guitar, like the guitars almost sound a little bit further back in the mix. It's like the drums and the vocals really overpower the guitars, especially during the blast beat sections, where during those blast sections, the guitars get lost in the shuffle. But when it gets into the doom parts, the guitars are definitely more prominent and they sound great. But whenever they get into those faster sections, the guitars definitely lose their flavor in the mix. And then, of course, maybe too many leads within a song. Like, they could have cut down some of the leads within a song and just focus more on the riff rather than just throwing in, like, three, four leads into one track. And then, of course, I could have had some change up in how these songs start. Like, pretty much... Every single song on this album had some kind of intro, whether it be dark chanting, spoken word, funeral organs, acoustic guitar, synths. It's like, so many songs, they could have just cut the intros out and just gone straight into the song itself. And I think it would have made the songs stronger in terms of the flow. And then, of course... I would say the song Hex and Nipple, the transitions, like there's a few times where the transitions, not only on this song, but in other tracks, where the transitions between, say, like the blast beats and the double time stuff, or even like the doomy sections and the blasting, can feel a little bit abrupt and doesn't flow the best. But overall... This is some dark, evil shit right here. So if you are a fan of Incantation, Immolation, Ulcerate, Portal, and even, I would say, Crucimentum, 
Definitely check this out. I thought it was a good album. I'm going to give this a 3 out of 5. I think if they could have just whittled down the leads on this album and cut out a lot of the intros and make the transitions a little bit smoother and as well as give the guitars a little more shine in the really fast and tense sections, and I think this would have definitely gone up in score. But songwriting-wise, they went all over the map. So yeah, 3 out of 5. But of course, those are just my opinions. What did you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. And until next time, keep your horns high and your dreams wet.